You are watching DIY by Nikki Foster. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki Foster and on this channel I post budget friendly and inspiring ideas. So in today's video, I'm going to be transforming my son's room. This room kind of embarrassed him in it, but... It kind of became like the hub for where I do laundry and not necessarily my son's bedroom anymore. So I'm gonna be transforming this space into what it's supposed to be, which is like a beautiful toddler to preschool kind of room. And I'm gonna be whipping out some power tools this time. This is my first time doing something like that. So if you guys are in for this DIY journey, sit tight because we are gonna get started. We are about to head to Home Depot, so let's go. Here I am at Home Depot. I gather a few items and also I wanted to share with you the vast color selection by Bear Paint. The colors I'm going to be using for this project are Palais White, which is like a creamy white, and then also Beta Fish, which is like a greenish teal color. Back at home, I start removing the items out of the room, the travel bags and laundry basket, the toys. And then also I wanted to point out that this is the smallest room in my house. So I had to maneuver the crib, which is now a toddler bed to work around the room. I grabbed the extra storage that was under the bed and all the infant things that I've been meaning to get rid of. Also, I finally got to all the hidden items that made its way under the dresser. I removed the shelf that's on the wall. I will be reusing this in the same location so I did not take out the anchors. And now the room is ready for me to paint. I'm using a medium duty 6x9 canvas drop cloth that I move around the room as needed. And of course, a ladder. You guys know how I love using that paint set from Home Depot, but this time I'm actually using like the professional version. I upgraded and got this. Instead of it being eight pieces, it's a six piece set. It is premium microfiber. So I wanna try that on the walls to see how smooth it'll roll the paint on there. So I'm excited to try this one. I'll let you guys know how it is. <laughs> and then just like before, I'm gonna be using this handy painter. This is like the best tool ever. And then last but certainly not least, you know I love using Bear Paint, so I'm gonna be using Bear Ultra Scuff Defense. Remember, it used to be called Bear Ultra Stain Blocking Paint and Primer one, but they changed the name to Bear Ultra Scuff Defense. So this one's really great. I'm using it in an eggshell finish because eggshell is like really good for kids' rooms, and you can just like kind of wipe anything off if they use like markers or anything on it. So this is what I'll be using. So let's get ready to paint. Since I'm doing two different colors in this room, I will be using the yellow frog tape this time. It's really good for fresh paint, so it doesn't peel away the new paint off the wall. Look at this nice. A quick tip for less mess when painting is to simply reuse the box that the brushes and rollers came in for your paint gallons so that it catches any of the paint drips. I lightly dip the handy painter in the paint, making sure it's well coated, but not overly saturated. This allows me to get one good wipe across the edge of the ceiling and along the corners of the wall. I really do love using this tool because it lets me get really good coverage by the corners and the ceilings. It just creates a really smooth line going down and then also, you know, wherever you're painting it at. And here's a quick look at the edging with the baby fish color. My first thoughts when I used this premium microfiber paint roller set was that it was amazing. I love the way it literally rolled onto the wall. It more so like glided onto the wall and it was super smooth. So I really do recommend it. The highlight about this brush set that I found later on was that you can wash it and reuse it again. There was one small thing that I noticed and it was that some of the fibers from the roller somehow stuck onto the wall, but I think that is like a super easy fix. So there you could see it's like a little tiny pieces of fiber that was on the wall. So um, if that's something that's gonna be annoying, you might wanna try the other version, um, but I did wanna just point that out. It was only a couple little parts that I saw, but as I mentioned before, I'm using Palias White. It is a creamy white color and matches nicely against the Beta Fish color. I start with the edges of the wall using the Handy Painter again and it makes painting so much easier. Then I fill in the centers using the microfiber paint roller. And my son wanted to help and he did a great job painting. I quickly showed him a few techniques and he caught on really fast. So I finished the rest of the room using the same technique until all the walls were finished. 
Also, I wanted to mention that the two inch brush that comes with the paint set is really good. You can really get into the small corners with it and I tried cutting it in by the ceiling and it worked really well. I do prefer to use the handy painter and then use the brush to do touch-ups. I found that that method works quicker and helps give a more professional finish. These were slats from the Ikea um, Sultan lead bed. I hope I'm saying that right. I never know how to pronounce the Ikea furniture. The bed slats have a new name. They are now called Leroy. They are still essentially the same exact item. They still come slatted together, held together by ribbon, and that's what I'm gonna be removing. For this board and batten project, I'm going to be upcycling my old bed frame. For the price and convenience, I do think this is a great DIY and IKEA hack to create a board and batten look without using a table saw to create a ton of wood cuts. So I actually lost a couple days because I have ordered the wrong thing. So this is part of that do your research kind of thing. So I'm about to use a brad nailer. The one I originally got was a pneumatic brad nailer. So I'm gonna show you guys what that means. So this is what a brad nailer looks like. And this is a pneumatic brad nailer. So this little part down here, it untwists so that you can add like a compression tank that allows it to be powered up. And I didn't realize that I don't have a compression tank and I really didn't want one because it takes a lot of space. I wanted something that was like more mobile. Now what I ended up buying and I had to wait for it to come was a battery powered brad nailer. These are way more expensive. So um, I got the Ryobi um, battery powered brad nailer. I placed the first piece of wood closest to the wall. Then I pressed the nozzle of the brad nailer against the wood so that it allows the 18, the 18 gauge nail to go into the wood as well as into the wall. This is what's going to hold the wood into the wall. When I get to the bottom, I turn the brad nailer to the side for better leverage in the tight corner. Then I use a measuring tape to space my wooden slats 15 inches apart. Then I repeat the process. I use six brad nails in each wooden slat to ensure a good hold. You can use more nails if you feel the need to. Just so you know the exact measurements, the wooden slats I'm using after they've been cut from the ribbon and everything, they are 15 inches long, three and a half inches wide and three fourth inches deep. So they do not come off the wall that much. They do not take up that much wall space. Once I get to the end, I follow the same techniques as my first slat, making sure the slat is butt up against the adjacent wall. For the finishing edge, I turn the slat sideways and use six nails on these as well. I make sure the ends of the slat line up with one another for a seamless finish. So I basically put the wood slats up to how far I can go. This, uh, this side I'm gonna have to cut. Since I only have one piece of wood to cut, I'm going to use this box saw that I had ordered off Amazon. This saw cuts well, but I won't be using that again. My arms are on fire. I ran into a little bit of an issue because these weren't lining up. I have I had put this one on already and it wasn't lining up. So I ended up um, taking this off and using a wire cutter to take off the, the, um, the nails. So what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna put this one on first, then put this one on. Okay, so let's see. Okay. So then now I'm gonna put this one on and make sure that the um, boards are aligned properly. And if it doesn't align 100% under here, I'm just gonna use wood filler anyway to fill that in. So I just wanna make sure that the wood pieces at the top are at least lining up. Once all the boards and slats are installed, I move on to using wood filler to fill in any gaps, spaces, and to cover up each nail I drilled in with the brad nailer. Also, I'll be sure to link the items to what I use in the description box below. Then I use a plastic spade to smooth everything out. And then I like to use light sanding paper to sand areas like this. I'm using 220 grit sandpaper by 3M. Once the wood filler is dried, I lightly sand those areas until they are smooth. And then one of my favorite products to use is tack cloth. I've used this in multiple projects here on my YouTube channel. If you've seen my bathroom makeover videos, you know I'm a huge fan of tack cloth. I use this when I painted my bathroom cabinets. I also used it when I spray painted my bathroom fixtures, just to name a few projects. Tack cloth has a sticky like film on it where it catches any of the dust debris after you sand, allowing for that super professional finish on any surface. For this DIY board and batten hack, I am painting the wood with Pelias White, the same color I had used on the walls. 
This paint has primer in it, so I'm not using an additional primer. I started out using the brush, but quickly realized it would take way too long to paint it that way. So I did switch it up and started using the roller instead. I then followed up with the brush getting into any corners, crevices, and spaces that I may have missed with the roller. This step does take time, but I actually found it to be quite relaxing. Also, I made sure to paint the top edge with the brush. I also used frog tape here to ensure that I did not get any unwanted white paint on the green top half of my wall. I'm excited. I can't believe I, I did a, I can't believe I did a batten board. It was like kind of like a, like a hack, but I really do think it came out really nicely. And I'm just adding a few DIY art pieces to the wall. And here's a look at the room before. It was boring. It was more like storage space for toys and laundry. And here is the room after. This wall and the DIY art is eye-catching. The board and batten makes the room feel way larger and the color pop really brings a fun feel to this toddler bedroom makeover. Also a note, doing a low half wall with white at the bottom allows the room to look bigger. If this inspired you in any way, let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more budget-friendly DIY and inspiring ideas. This is part one to a multi-part series, so make sure you're subscribed to see what I do with the rest of the room. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Because I knew that these would come in handy one day, so. It's still a go, so. Ooh, look, I did it.